Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you, yes you, make your game dev dreams become a reality. Today we're going to look at how to draw informational text and lines in the scene view using the Handles API. I did this in AI Series Part 12 to show what path an AI would take to get to a target and why that is the shortest target compared to the vector 3 distance. To achieve this, we're going to look at three things. We're going to look at the editor class that allows us to make a custom editor for one of our scripts. We're going to look at the handles class, the label specifically, which allows us to draw text in the scene view. And we're going to look at the handles draw line functionality that allows us to draw a line between two points in world space. As you can see up here, there's a lot more you can do with handles besides just drawing text and lines. We'll get into more of that in a future video if you guys like this kind of video. So let me know in the comments below if you do like this kind of video. If you haven't watched AI Series Part 12, then you're going to miss some of the nuances of and explanations that I normally give because a lot of what we're doing in this one has already been covered in that video. So go back, check that one out. I think it's up here. I haven't pointed to a card in a while, so I'm pretty sure it's this side. And make sure that you watch that. In this video, we're specifically focusing on the editor part and drawing stuff in the scene view, not the actual algorithm in depth like I did in the AI series part 12. In your project to do any of the editor scripting, you need to put some classes in a special Magic Unity folder called Editor. Unity understands all resources in this folder should not be included in the build and are only for helping you in the editor. So if you don't have that, make that folder Editor and then create a new script, Move to Closest Target Editor. We'll then open the move to closest target editor and make it extend the editor class. By extending the editor class, we get access to some magic unity functions like the on scene GUI, which allows us to draw controls in the scene view. At the top, we'll add a custom editor type of move to closest target attribute. This tells Unity that this editor class that we're making should only be used for the move to closest target class. Whenever we have a game object selected that has the move to closest target script on it, it will call whatever functions we have defined here. So we'll define the public void on scene GUI because we want to draw some controls in the scene view. And in there we'll do move to closest target, move to closest target equals move to closest target target. This gives us a reference to the move to closest target based on the target that the user currently has selected. This target is automatically populated by Unity in this editor class. If for some reason this is null, we'll just return and not do anything. Then we're going to do the exact same thing that we did in the move to closest target script in the AI series part 12. If you haven't checked out that video, please go back and watch it. I'm not going to explain all of this in as much detail as I did over there. The general concept that we're doing here is we're trying to find all of the paths that the nav mesh agent will take to get to the specified targets, calculating the distance each of those is, and then we're going to draw some stuff in the scene GUI once we know what those are. So we define some variables to figure out what the closest index is and what the closest target distance is. So we loop through the move to closest target dot targets dot length. We add a new nav mesh path to our list of paths. We check that the target is null. If it is, we're just going to skip this one. That way we don't explode whenever something is null. We'll create a reference to nav mesh path path equal to paths indexed by i. So that's the nav mesh path we just created. We calculate the path from the move to closest target transform position to the move to closest target dot targets indexed by i dot position using the agent's area mask and populating the path that we just referenced on the previous line. If that returns true, meaning we do have a valid path to this target, we'll do the distance check from the agent's current position to the first corner, and then we'll loop through all of the remaining corners and sum all the distance between them. If you are following along, note that this should be int j equals 1, not j equals 0, because inside of that loop we check j minus 1, and j equals negative 1 is out of bounds of the array. I come back at the end and fix that. After we sum the distances, we check if the distance is less than the closest target distance, and for the first index it's guaranteed to be. We set the closest target distance to the distance, closest index to be i, and then we start doing something more interesting. Here we do handles.label, and what that does is draws some text in the 3D space of the scene view based on the two arguments we're going to pass here. So we'll pass move to closest target dot targets indexed by i dot position. So we're going to draw this text at the target position, which makes sense if we're going to show the distance it takes for the agent to get there. We should position that text approximately where that target is, right? Then the second argument is a string. We're going to use a string template here. That's this dollar sign 
quotes and put in the vector three distance colon. We use this curly brace to actually inject code into the string here. And we'll do vector three distance move to closest target dot transform dot position to the move to closest target dot targets index by i dot position. We'll take the result of that and do dot to string to convert that float value to a string. And we'll pass in n3 to the to string function, and that will just format our string so we have three decimal places. After we've listed the vector three distance, I'll do a new line and put path distance, and then again the curly brace with distance dot to string again with the n3 format. i will draw the distance when we do have a valid path, but we also potentially might not have a valid path. So I'm going to copy this and paste it into the else block. And at the end, instead of putting the distance because that's no longer defined, I'll just put invalid path because wherever the agent is cannot get to our target. Once we've drawn all these labels, what we'll do is iterate over each of the paths that we just defined. So that's for each nav mesh path, path in path. We'll check if the paths.index of path is equal to the closest index. So if we're dealing with the path that is the closest one, we'll do a handles.color equals color.green. This will change most of the handle controls to use whatever color we just defined. And in the case of the closest index, we'd like it to be green, indicating to ourselves that this is the one we're going to use if we make the nav mesh agent go to the closest target. In all other cases, we'll set it to be red because those are not the paths that the agent will take. We'll then check if the path.corners.length is greater than zero. If it is, we will start drawing that path. So that's handles.drawLine. And what that does is draws a line in 3D space in the scene view based on the two arguments you pass, which would be the start and end point of the line in world space coordinate. I'll do move to closest target dot transform dot position as the first argument. So that's where the agent is. And then the path that corners indexed by zero. So the first index of the corners would be the second argument. So we'll draw a line from where the agent is to the first corner. And then we'll iterate through all of the path corners and connect them with lines by doing handles.drawLine path dot corners indexed by i and path.corners indexed by i plus one. Since we're going one above our index in this one, we're making sure to terminate the for loop with path.corners.length minus one. And then I'll scroll back up. And as I mentioned, this j index should start at one since we go back one. So I'll do four in j equals one instead of four in j equals zero. Let's hop back to the Unity editor real fast. Select the agent and we can see our lines are drawn. One of them is green, the rest of them are red, and the green one's the closest one. But it's pretty hard to read the text because it's this like black color and we have a grayish floor. So let's see what we can do to address that. We'll go back to the move to closest target editor script. And at the top of the on scene GUI function, we'll define a GUI style called style and set it to be a new GUI style. And what I'll do here is use this shorthand constructor, I think it's called. Anyway, what this does is allows us to define in just this constructor, the properties that we'd like to define. So I'm going to use normal because remember that the labels only use the normal style. I'll do that equals a new GUI style state. And again, I'm going to use the same object constructor syntax to provide the text color and set the text color to be white here. This is more or less the same as doing GUI style style equals new GUI style and then doing style.normal equals new GUI style state and then style.normal.text color equals color.white. Then we'll scroll down to where we did handles.label and at the very end of these lines we'll add the style as the third argument. After our string, we'll add in the style on both of them, and that will make them take this style where we just overwrote the color to be white. If we hop back to the Unity editor, now our text shows up as white, and it looks exactly like what you saw in the AI series part 12. I hope you got a lot of value added to today's video and you understand how to make a custom editor for your script and how to draw text and lines into the scene view using the handles API. If you have been getting value out of this video, please consider liking and subscribing to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. New videos are posted every Tuesday and sometimes on other days too, like this one. If you have any questions, if you have a suggestion for a topic, or if you implemented the handles API into your project, drop a comment down below and I'll see you on the next video.